guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Michelle and here on my channel I do all kinds of mommy videos. So if those are the type of videos you like to watch, I'd love for you to consider hitting that red subscribe button so you can see every time I have a new video. So today I am going to be talking more about the genetics appointment and why we're going to genetics for this baby and why I did it for my first daughter as well. Um, it's something that I think I talked about with her but I didn't really go into a lot of detail and so I thought I'd kind of go over it because it's just a lot to include in a update. So the I have here the paperwork so don't mind if I'm looking at it it's just so that I make sure I'm giving as accurate information as possible. So the Disorder that the genetic disorder that um, my husband and I are both carriers for is called alpha thalassemia, and here it says alpha thalassemia is a blood disorder that reduces the production of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the protein in red blood cells that carries oxygen to cells throughout the body. So in people with the characteristic features of alpha thalassemia, a reduction in the amount of hemoglobin prevents enough oxygen from reaching the body's tissues. Um, affected individuals also have a shortage of red blood cells, which is anemia, which can cause pale skin, weakness, fatigue, and more serious complications. So there are two types of alpha thalassemia that can cause health problems. The more severe type is known as hemoglobin Bart hydrops fit, fatalis, sorry if I'm not pronouncing it right, syndrome, which is also known as HB Bart syndrome or alpha thalassemia major. The milder form is called HBH disease. So what my what we would have our combination would be the HBH disease. So this is a disease that is common in um, people of African American descent and also of um, Asian descent. So my husband, if you don't know, he is half Vietnamese, half Chinese, and uh, I am also. My parents are from the West Indies. So of course, like we're both affected. If it was just one or the other, you usually wouldn't see any issues. Um, but because we are both carriers, that's why this is something that's come up. So HBH disease causes mild to moderate anemia yellowing of the eyes and skin which is also known as jaundice some affected some affected individuals also have bone changes such as overgrowth of the upper jaw or an unusually prominent forehead and these symptoms usually appear in early childhood and usually they live into adulthood so there's not really a concern in that um, so here it does say that it's a very a fairly common blood disorder worldwide. Thousands of infants with HB Bart syndrome and HBH disease are born each year, particularly in Southeast Asia. Alpha thalassemia also occurs frequently in people from Mediterranean countries, uh, Africa, the Middle East, India, and Central Asia. So that's kind of the information that they've given us. They gave us a little bit more information about what kind of things that they would be concerned about or they would be looking out for. Um, so there are a lot of combinations and of course I'm not going to go into it because it's just a lot of genetic stuff that I don't feel like I would do justice to explain. Um, but there are a lot of combinations to see where your baby will range in terms of um, the symptoms they could potentially have or quality of life and um, in like the most severe cases uh, babies don't survive they're usually born um, stillborn so it was a wide spectrum with my daughter it was so nerve-wracking so stressful to deal with it until we got in there and we kind of got more information and even still we were very nervous um, and she is absolutely fine she is also a carrier but uh, presents with no symptoms except the fact that she has low iron so I also suffer from having low iron which is why I'm always taking an iron supplement and from the blood work we've ever done with her she also has low iron so she gets an iron supplement as well um, so this time around I didn't feel as nervous I didn't feel as scared I didn't feel just overwhelmed but it is a nerve-wracking appointment to go into and kind of review the information and go over everything again 
So when we went to this genetic appointment, we talked again about, you know, what alpha thalassemia is. We talked about what the options were or like what the possible outcomes would be in our case, like the combination between, um, my husband and myself. Uh, with my daughter, we did do testing of the cord blood. So when she was born, the midwives collected cord blood and they sent that off to the hospital and they sent it off for testing to see what exactly her uh, outcome was. And so in this appointment, we kind of same thing. We talked about possible testing. So again, we are sort of on the fence. They're saying um, it's also covered in the newborn screening. So every time a baby is born, they go through newborn screening. They take the blood and they test them for a wide variety of genetic disorders. And so it's covered there, but the results don't always come as quickly as when they do the cord blood. So we're kind of on the fence that if they could flag our case that we could just not worry about the cord blood and just go with the newborn screening. But we are prepared and our midwives are prepared to be able to collect um, the cord blood and send that off. And then depending on the results and what the what what the outcome is, then we might have a follow up appointment. So they said um, if there was anything that they would have them follow up, um, just to follow the baby to do testing, just to make sure that everything's okay, and it would require maybe some extra medical visits or care um, every once in a while, just so that they make sure that they can monitor the situation. Um, overall, it's something overwhelming. Like anytime you hear that things could possibly not be perfect with your baby, it is the most nerve wracking, heart wrenching thing. Like you just love that little baby so much already. And the thought that there could be something wrong that you can't control, something you can't protect them from is probably your worst case scenario. Um, this time I feel a lot better prepared in terms of the information and what's going to happen. And honestly, at this point, all I can do is, you know, have faith and pray that everything is going to be absolutely perfect with this baby as well. Um, but I do know that this is something that, you know, my husband and I are going to be dealing with or kind of navigating every single time we have a new pregnancy because this is something that is going to be a potential for all our children. So that's a little bit overwhelming knowing that every single time it's going to be this again. But having gone through it one time and kind of getting all the information I need and going into this a little bit more knowledgeable, I feel a lot better about it. So that is basically it for what the genetics appointment was, how it looked like, um, what we talked about, and what was the genetic blood disorder that my husband and I are carriers of. Um, honestly, if you guys are out there and you're thinking about having a baby, uh, you're thinking about getting pregnant, uh, I would encourage you to make sure you look at your genetics and to get that genetic testing done on yourself and your spouse because it wasn't something we ever thought about. I think maybe my doctor had done it once and had known that I was a carrier, but I never even thought about it with my husband. And by the time we started looking into it for the both of us, we were so far in the pregnancy. The only other way that they can find out if the baby has anything wrong or anything going on there is to do an amnio and that's when they go in there and they take some of the amniotic fluid and they test it but of course with amnios there's a risk um, a risk to you risk to the baby there's a risk of miscarriage and it just wasn't something that I felt was going to change how I was throughout this pregnancy or how I would love this baby or take care of this baby and so I just felt like there wasn't it wasn't a chance that I was willing to take of course some parents if they know this within like that first um you know find out that before 12 weeks or somewhere in there they may consider depending on how severe the disease is in their child or how it's going to affect their child they may decide to do the amnio and they may decide that they want to uh, terminate the pregnancy so that is also a reason why it's 
better to get the testing done early if that's something that is going to kind of change how you feel about it. So for me it didn't so I just decided I don't want to do the amnio. Last time with my daughter I was too late in my pregnancy to do it and it wasn't going to be safe um, and this time around I just decided that it wasn't something that was right for our family. Um, everybody has to make their own choices but I suggest if you're from any of those descents so that was let me find the paper Mediterranean countries Africa the Middle East India and Central Asia maybe you consider getting tested just to see or just do some genetics because you know it's nice to have that information it's nice to be prepared um, and that way things could be a little less overwhelming I mean no matter what it's your baby so it's a very stressful time but I just wanted to kind of talk to you guys about this because it's something that's important in our pregnancies the current pregnancies past pregnancies and future pregnancies but it's also something that's important that could affect some of you guys out there and I want to give you guys that information so that you guys know that like it, things could be okay you just never know every situation is different but I want you guys to be able to have that this information like you know forewarned is forearmed like you guys have that information and you can go out do some genetic testing so that you kind of are on the ball before you even get pregnant and you know these things so I hope that this video was helpful it gave you guys some information um, if you guys know anybody who is pregnant or going to get pregnant and this could be something that could affect them or you think that they should look into more genetic testings I'd love for you guys to share this video with them because I really just want to help all mamas and potential mamas and future mamas out there Thank you guys so much for watching if you guys like this video please give it a thumbs up if you aren't already subscribed, hit that red subscribe button so you could join my little internet family. And I will see you guys in my next video. Love you guys. Bye.